For most of us, it takes a few years of adulthood to understand the influence family has on us when we're young. Nashville's Chad Slagle is the perfect example. Chad's passion connects the traditions of America's past with traditions passed on from his father and grandfather. Wildside guide Terry Bulger shows us how these traditions are grounded in an ancient weapon called the longbow. Shaving is the way most men start their day. Same goes for Chad Slagle. It's just not whiskers that he's scraping away. Nothing's better than hands-on when it comes to this kind of stuff. Um, you can read all the books you want, but to get your hands dirty, you're not going to get this down. In a backyard shed filled with signs that honor and praise the past, Chad's chiseling his own traditional cherry and hickory longbow. The leftovers are a sort of homemade cherry pile. That hunk of orange osage, it's next on his bow-making menu. Patience is the key. <laughs> Not having patience will destroy a bow quicker than anything else. Twenty hours of intense focus produces one bow. Twenty hours and you've created a reminder of 1855 life in the American West. But this weapon didn't first appear there. We're going back even further than that. These, these type of bows have been made for at least 4,000 years. Um, these types of bows have have taken, have been used in combat and taken more lives than uh, guns. Like many hunters as a younger man, Chad's desire for deer was never about style, certainly not old-fashioned style. It was all about substance and success. I hunted deer with a bow and arrow, compound bow, for 20 years. And it got to the point, um, like most things in our convenient world these days, it just kind of got old, kind of got, I wanted something different. What he wanted, it turns out, was a chance to connect to the past. Tradition is something that grabbed Chad as a boy. He grew up in his dad's West Virginia archery shop, surrounded by family. By the time I was eight years old, I was making arrows after school and working there on the weekends. Now, in a way, he's back in the shop again. And the true art of bow making is this, this part right here. Thirty years later, creating 20 brand new handmade old style longbows a year. Ultimately what we want in the tilling process is to make sure that both limbs are bending equally all the way through. Here you hold your heart and hope your bow doesn't break. Um, it's best just to walk away from it for a while, come back refreshed, because once you've gone too far, that's it. Grandpa taught me long ago. He walks away from the bow and comes back as the world touring singing bowyer. Little long bow country. This is what I do. It makes sense to write about it. And I'll hunt just like the men walk the trail of tears. The guitar brought him to Nashville. The bow and the wildlife songs he's written have brought fans of the outdoors to him. It also allows me to do venues that, you know, I can play in a honky tonk or I can play at 10,000 feet in Idaho, you know, <laughs> in camp. There's no comparison to me. He can also keep connected to family, honoring an inherited walking memory from his grandpa. The walking stick stayed in my den till just a year ago when I tailored and worked into a beautiful hunting bow. Beautiful and singing with sadness successful. And in the dimness of a clearing I finally found a way to cry As I knelt beside the turkey I told Grandpa goodbye It's all happening because of that bow. While backyard balloons bring some satisfaction well, If I can't hit something that big on a regular basis I need to not be <laughs> out in the woods. <laughs> Chad knows what he's doing goes far beyond just hitting hot air. It's 
to sit down and put 20 hours into something like this and to be able to go out and take a deer or turkey with it that's it's the it's the highlight of any bow hunting career i, I can guarantee you that i'm terry bolger on tennessee's wild side i'm reminded of guy clark's great song the carpenter you gotta hold your mouth right never miss your mark oh i like that <laughs>